I think it began again looking at issues in silos. So the whole attention had gone to climate change, which uh, that's why we have the framework convention, we have the Kyoto Protocol, we have now the Paris Agreement, and the whole world focus on climate change. Even we began seeing uh, countries at national levels establishing ministries of climate change, independent from other environmental issues. Delighted as time went by, the climate community also realized, oh, actually climate change cannot survive, cannot operate in its own without biodiversity, without nature. Not surprising in the recent years, yes, biodiversity has come to the forefront. Probably that's the opportunity created by un the unfortunate situation of the COVID-19 and the lockdown because attention now shifted to biodiversity and seeing the connection with climate change. When you look at the Climate Change Conference of Parties meeting, COP, you have heads of states from these developed countries attending the US, France, UK, name them, Germany, they are there in person. What do you expect from that? It definitely increases the visibility, the urgency for climate change. Because they are seeing the US president is there, they are seeing maybe these powerful global leaders are there, attending and participating in the meeting. And those global leaders, powerful as they are, they drive the thinking of people. So when you see them there, it increases whatever they are discussing its importance, its value is raised. And that is what has happened to climate change. But you look at biodiversity, when there is a meeting of all sorts of parties, could be in Egypt, could be in Mexico, could be in India, could be South Korea, where they have taken place so far over the years. Who is there? It is the head of state of that country, and possibly prime ministers from other countries, but not prime ministers are even fewer. Then it is the ministers of environment. So you have the head of state, maybe perhaps because it is that country hosting it. Why don't we have the same powerful heads of state attending CBD meeting to help us raise the profile of biodiversity? Because today, if those leaders just told people, you know what, in addition to climate change, we need to rally our efforts and address loss of biodiversity because this is another problem that is going to determine our existence here on this planet. High levels of attention to climate change is actually a relatively new phenomenon, right? Scientists have been working, you know, warning about climate change for 50 years. And it's just in the last couple of years that we're really seeing significant attention. That's largely because people are really starting to feel the impacts of climate change and to realize how bad it might get under a climate change scenario. With biodiversity, the impacts are just as significant and they're actually contributing to climate change. Species extinctions, habitat loss, the loss of other benefits from, from biodiversity like food and water security, including climate stability, these are all part of the biodiversity crisis. And these are really linked by, you know, biodiversity and climate are really linked together. And that's why we talk about needing to create an equitable, carbon neutral, nature positive future. The challenge is that people aren't really feeling those impacts yet. So in the meantime, we're just continuing to, you know, destroy the earth and undermine our own well-being and that of other species. Uh, the issue on biodiversity is, um, is not as straightforward as is the issue on climate change in which you have uh, a debate around uh, CO2 emissions. 
The crisis of biodiversity involves a variety of factors that has to do, you know, with fresh waters, forests, um, people that are on, on, on rural areas, um, fisheries, um, and, and that's one of the, that brings a lot of complexities because uh, the biodiversity policy has to interact with other, um, other elements in ministries that has to do with agriculture, fisheries, uh, finance, uh, human rights even. And I think that's one, one element that, uh, that is making biodiversity having more difficulties to even be uh, in the top of the media. Well, if we think about it, it took people a long time to take climate change with the seriousness it deserved, too. And I think it, people really understand now how it affects their own lives. We see droughts, we see floods, we see heat waves and hurricanes. Everybody knows somebody's been affected or has been affected. So all of a sudden, there's a lot of fear and a lot of urgency. When a species blinks out, it usually happens in a remote location. We might not have even documented that species, much less its relationship to all the other plants and animals in its ecosystem. And so you, there's this lack of direct connection to what's going on, and people don't understand how it affects them. So it's been this steady drip, drip, drip of the impoverishment of our natural world but most people aren't that attuned to what's going on at that level. Of course, at some point, it's going to have catastrophic effects like climate change will. We are going to see ecological collapse that's going to affect our food systems and our health and our well-being. Uh, we're going to be left in a world with rats and crows and not much else. And, uh, but, and, that, and then it'll be too late, right? So we have to figure out a way of connecting people to nature, what's going on out there, and the complexities of those ecological relationships that ultimately support all of our lives. My, my vision is that in the future, when there will be a realization of the importance of the crisis, uh, perhaps one thing that is different also with biodiversity is, is um, we don't have uh, events like fires and floods and etc. What we have is extinction of species and, and that is dramatic but perhaps less of a headline for people. So we, on the other end, nature is something that everybody can relate to. Everybody can talk about the good time they had walking in the forest or in a field, etc. And then it's up to us to move and take advantage of that momentum. And I'm convinced that it is not about who's on first and who's on second. It's about bringing the convention together and making sure we have solutions that are adapted to things that are joint, but also to things that are separate. Um, taking action on uh, decarbonization of transport is not so much an issue for biodiversity or dealing with invasive alien species is very much a biodiversity thing and not going to do much for climate. So uh, we can work together, we can also take care of our own things and it, it has to be a seamless, transparent, well integrated uh, uh, picture. I think because it is a global problem that requires quite local solutions, so biodiversity is different between people's gardens, between different countries, between different regions, between, you know, it's, it is diverse, it's biodiversity, but I think flipping that around, it also means that we need to understand that those collective global problems have local solutions. So really empowering people to understand that they come into contact with biodiversity on a day-to-day -day basis. It's something that they can actually do something about, um, but it also goes up all those different levels. So it's something that governments can can do things about is something that local communities can do something about. So I think communicating that a bit better, but also understanding that, that it is diverse, that there will be diverse solutions because it is a diverse problem.